atomic gigant occasion was a sweep in Japan nation when along came a dude with an ultra attitude, a common morado who's the greatest kicker of Japan. End of all, man. Last too short now, baby. To not talk big now, baby. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kaiju Conversation. I'm your host, Elijah. And joining me, as always, my lovely co-host and editor. Hello, I am Rex. And we are here for the last episode of 2023. It's been a long year. And it's been a long year. It feel real that it's coming to an end. It, It really does not. Like... We started this year at episode 50, and here we are at episode 84, 34 Ooh. episodes in, plus like 11 bonus episodes, 10 live streams, two or three minisodes. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> nah, and it kind of just doesn't feel real, if I'm going to be honest here. And I don't feel you like not, 2023 was a real year. No, not it really convinced. didn't feel like it. Like you not and I convinced. both, you you talked more so than I did about this. But honestly, like this year has went by so fast. I'm joining the Tinfoil Hat Society. I don't believe 2023 was a real year. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Honestly, since I mean, I, we've said this, but since like 2020, like time just does not move the same. I mean, it never does. <laughs> Every year, faster, 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 faster. Maybe I don't. I don't know how to feel about that. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm curious. I am. I'm curious how next year is going to be in terms of speed. Like, a lot's going to be happening next year, but there's also it appears there'll be a little more free time in general. I'm just talking in general, um, for me at least. So I'm curious if next year will move by a little slower. Or if it'll move by faster because of how everything's turning out. It'll certainly be interesting to see. It will be. So, Rex, how have you been, man? How how's life? How's how's everything I've been going? Doing pretty great, all things considered. Had quite a few uh unexpected events happen in my life, but not unexpected in a bad way, you could say. Oh good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's part of part of it's kind of part of why this year doesn't feel like a real year, you know. That's fair, you know. Stuff happens, and good things and bad things happen, and sometimes it kind of makes things weird. Mm. But at the moment, I'm just living the good life. At the moment, it's all you can do. See how long it lasts. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> but how about yourself? I'm good. Mm-hmm. I, I I know that when I said that there was like a period, period, period question yeah. mark. I'm trying to think. Elaborate. Um. Hmm. I'm all right. I'm tired. I'm be honest. I'm I'm tired. Like I've been working nonstop. Since I got back from my trip to Nashville, and like the only times I've had off is like seeing minus one. Mm. So like for me, it's just been go 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 go. Which I mean, for the most part, it's not been awful. Um, but I am hoping to have a little bit more downtime, just kind of to relax, breathe a little bit. I'm tired. Like I need sleep. Uh, mm. I found out that my two days off that I normally have here at the end of the year, I have to work. And then uh, I also found out that on the day that I typically open at my job, which is on a Sunday, typically open Sundays. But for some reason, on the 31st, I close. So the party that I was invited to drop by, I don't know if I'll even have time to do that. I don't know. Of a shame. Yeah. I mean, they said I could still come by. Like, they said, you know, like, we're going to be up until, like, 2 in the morning. So, like, I might still go, but it's also like, uh, like, what am I going to do? 
They're they're doing like a Lovecraftian thing. They're gonna have like some HP Lovecraft movies playing. And oh. They're gonna they're gonna have like some some treats and whatnot and like some like Cthulhu games. And it's like, well, I mean, that'd be cool, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I want to go to that. I might <laughs> I might want to go home and go to bed. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Ah, God, I, I'm sounding older by the day. I had somebody at work the other day, a customer, ask me. Uh, he, he guessed my age, and he said I was uh, nine years older than I actually was. That's fair. And, and uh, <laughs> every time it makes me feel like I'm, I'm aging more and more. <laughs> I, am, I am not looking forward to, to when I'm actually that age because they're going to say I look older than I actually am. It'll be funny though. Uh no, it won't. It'll it'll be depressing. I'm gonna. It'll be, be funny for me. I'm sure you're gonna be laughing. I'm gonna here. laugh at you. I'm going to laugh at you. Hey, at laugh. least I don't have a baby face. Okay. That's. I guess that's true. Yeah. Good for sucks you. To be, sucks to be you. I don't know. I feel like having a baby face, at, like somewhat of a baby face, at like. My age is fine. You're like two normal. years different than me. Yeah. You look like you're in your 40s. <laughs> oh, I'm going to fucking beat your ass. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> motherfucker. I mean, seemingly, according to other people, I'm not wrong. Though. <sighs> <laughs> Based on this conversation. But outside of the fact I'm exhausted and tired, I'm not doing awful. I need more free time. I'm ready to sit down and watch movies. Well, speaking of movies, have you watched any Tokusatsu recently? I saw Minus One like a hundred more times. Oh, nice. And that's nice. about it. I haven't even seen the newest episode of Monarch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we should do that sometime soon. Not today. <laughs> Not today. Yeah, I don't think I can do it today either. Uh, right. Have you watched any Tokusatsu? I actually have. I actually watched. It. Not only did I see minus one again, although maybe I mentioned that in the last episode. Actually, um, um, I have seen a movie that has been on my you know, watch list for a little bit um, since I first heard about it. A, a live action anime adaptation called or manga adaptation called Zom 100 bucket list of the dead oh the the movie on netflix yes yes yeah i ended up watching it with a friend of mine who i invite who i invited over during the party and uh yeah it was actually a pretty it was it was fu a solidly fun you know little comedy film it's a zombie movie yeah japanese zombie got, movie yeah, the Godzilla head makes an appearance. I love that. And and it has Godzilla Final Wars actor. Kazuki Kitamura. Kitamura. Yeah, as I love that. one of the main antagonists. And there's a little bit of a Tokusatsu tribute at the end. Huh. If, if you've seen the film or when you watch it, you'll know what I mean. <laughs> I do plan on eventually watching it. I just don't know it's, it's when. It's pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. I, I think a lot of people don't like it, and I don't know. It's, it, it gets a little ridiculous at the end. There's something that happens, but I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> the person I was with was kind of like, this movie This movie just lost half a star in Letterbox just for that decision, man. This movie was so good up until that point. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't do Letterboxd. Mm. I, I, I created kind of, an account. It's, it's kind of a a running joke between me and and them, where it's where it's like, oh, this this is going in this is going in my letterbox. Oh, this is going in my letterbox. I so, see. Yeah. I because I you convinced me to download it, and like I have it, but it's I just I can't. I cannot find it in me 
to like actively use this. Like I, I don't see the exciting aspect of Letterboxd. It's boring. I just, I just like it because like I get it, it helps me keep track of films. Like keep track of my watch list mainly. Um, but outside of Zone One Hundred, I also very recently rewatched Shin Kamen Rider. Great film. That one free free full viewings and. Yeah, this is probably probably my favorite viewing of the film, to be honest. Most invested really? I've felt in the film. Yeah, yeah. Huh. See, I, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I need to rewatch Shin Kamen Rider. I really do. Yeah, it's really good. Go do that. It's on Prime. You can you can do that. Yeah, I know. I just don't I whenever I have the time like I I ah uh, fair enough if if I cuz like just for some context I've been sitting in this chair talking into a mic now for 13 hours mm. as of this recording um when we're done here I have to go home go to bed go to work I'm off tomorrow no I'm not I lied I'm working on my day stuff. I only get one day off this week. Oof, no bueno. Yeah. And then Sunday I work 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., more like 7 to 6.30. Um, so I have Sunday evening, but I have a video that I've been asked, I've been commissioned to edit. So I have to do that. And then I have uh, I have another video I have to edit. That's a commission. And then I have some other projects that I'm waiting on confirmation on. And then I got to start working on those, getting those uh, researched and produced. Um, one of them being commission work, the other two being fun little side gigs. Um, and then I also have like other things I got to do. Uh, I was supposed to do a, I'm supposed to do for uh, Monsters with Attitude, I'm, I'm doing a list. Or they're like figure of the year. And my uh, job duty is uh, articulated figures. So I have to go through all of the major Godzilla companies and like get all the figures that were articulated that came out this year. Mm. Which is going to be your Hayas, your uh, Super Sevens, your um, SH Monster Arts. And I think that's it. I think. I ha I'll have to go back and double check, but like, it's just a lot. I got a lot, <laughs> and that's why next year, uh, that's why next year I'm trying to like slow down because mm. homeboy ain't got the ain't got the the energy that he somehow had. That energy's gone. <laughs> But yeah, outside of Shin Kamen Rider, that's more or less everything I've watched. You know, speaking of tokusatsu, there is a lot to look forward to next year. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I, I've seemingly forgotten what, what we're supposed to be covering next year. And I forgot what we're covering this year. Right I was now. about to say. What are we covering this year? What, what, what are we, what well, are we talking about almost right everything now? this year, but... Right now, our schedule, on my schedule, it's written that today's episode is covering Kaiju in 2024. Oh, that sounds exciting. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be taking a look at every, pretty much every upcoming Kaiju product, project, you know, television shows, uh, movies, special edits of movies. Oh, and, like what we did last year. Yes, yes, yes. Now you're, oh, now you're getting it. Independent films, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, look at that. Well, that's very intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'd, I'd hope you have an idea. I'd hope you um, did some research. So should I have done some research? Yeah, yeah. Because oh. we're starting off... Kaiju in 2024 with Toei. Oh, no. I know, like, oh. Toei is my least knowledgeable company. 
That's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, in that case, I'll start us off with uh, the final few episodes of Osama Sentai King Oja will be okay. airing in 2024. So... I've heard not like what's so it's weird for Don Brothers. I feel like every other week people were talking about that one and how good it was. Mm-hmm. But King Oger has just been kind of quiet. I haven't heard anything. See, for me, it's like I hear sometimes I hear King Oger is amazing. Other times I hear it. The uh, visual effects are awful. Some days I hear it's mid other days I hear it's pretty good. See, I it sucks because it feels like Sentai is the one branch of kaiju because I mean there is still kaiju as far as I'm aware in in the shows. Like they still do have kaiju appear. As far as I'm aware, yeah. If 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 not, then there's at least giant creatures. Yeah. And it it's kind of sad because like I feel like that like Ultraman is still showing and we're getting a lot of like acknowledgement for that. Any movie that comes out, we get acknowledgement for, but when it comes I mean, to it Sentai, depends on what side of uh, the Toku fandom you're on, really. Cause like, if you're, I mean, if you're on like the Henshin hero side of the fandom, you'll see a lot of posting about Sentai and Kamen Rider more so than Ultraman really, in all honesty. Granted, then- Blazer has been really popular, so. In terms of like just kaiju in general, like the yeah. kaiju st- side and whatnot, sure. I do feel like Sentai just does not get it. It's, sure. it's it's weird because it honestly feels like somehow Power Rangers and Super Sentai has detached itself away from kaiju, even though they both like it. It's giant robots fighting giant monsters. Like that's that's the a basic understanding of of power rangers and super sentai but that is what it does so the fact that like the kaiju genre the kaiju fandom in general just doesn't seem to i mean power rangers has has crossed over with godzilla and is getting a continuation crossover (laughs) right it's it's so it's just it's so weird and like our friends uh michael and nathan they've done i mean they did the power trip a, a power rangers podcast um, which I appeared on for that uh, that comic episode on Mighty Morphin versus Godzilla, huh. and it I don't know it's just it's weird like it feels like there would be a lot more crossover than there actually is in terms of just like right. fans talking about it like if we legitimately like if the kaiju fandom enjoyed Ultraman Godzilla Gamera Power Ranger Super Sentai and all the independent and side stuff. We would never have, we would never run out of content. Every week of the year, we would have something to talk about, essentially. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's just really weird that none of it gets broadcast when it comes to Power Rangers or Super Sentai. Right. And, you know, speaking of Super Sentai, we are getting a uh, anniversary film next year as well. We're getting... Toku Sentai Dekaranja 20th Anniversary Fireball Booster, which does have the original cast of Dekaranja returning with new Sentai suits. It's going to be released in theaters summer of 2024. Very limited. It's it's supposed to be a V cinema, cinema release. That's what a lot of the right. Sentai and, and Kamen Rider... And Rider movies as well, yeah. Yeah. Um, v Cinema Next series. <laughs> it, it, Rider. It, it will be coming to Blu-ray and DVD November 13th of 2024. So we have almost a whole year until it comes out to physical in Japan, um, which I've always found the Toei like release system kind of weird. You know, like they they'll put it out limit like a limited release for like a couple, maybe a week or two, like three months before it actually hits physical. I just I've never understood that release schedule. That just doesn't mm. make sense, and for like this stuff. Mm. But it is cool because we also did get a uh, Shot Factory. One of their last releases, I believe, was Decker Ranger. I think Decker Ranger, yeah. Cover Ranger, with their last two. So you could, in theory, watch Decker Ranger, the complete series, and then find a way to see this movie if you really wanted to. <laughs> I haven't seen a single episode. The, the The most Power Rangers I've seen is. I've seen the 2017 movie, and as a kid, I remember seeing a handful of episodes of a Power Rangers season 
on TV. Doesn't even doesn't even remember which one. I don't even That's... know which one it was. I own like almost I own uh seasons one through seventeen. I own uh both Ninja Steel, both Dino Charge, I own Mega Force, I own both Samurais, and I own most of the holiday specials and then i own all three movies but i've only seen the 2017 movie in a handful of random episodes right so i know nothing and i haven't seen the drop of super sentai mm. oh and That's i read the, the comic book i read the godzilla versus saban's mighty Morphin power rangers comic well that's a shame because you know following the end of king oja in about i want to say march of 2024 will come the start of the next Sentai series, Bakuage Sentai Boom Boomja. What a title. Yeah. <laughs> Boom Boomja. Yeah. Yeah, and I know there's a handful of leaks on the designs and whatnot out. It just yeah. sounds so... See, Sentai is... I don't know if I could get into modern Sentai. Maybe I could. I maybe, I maybe. I, I don't know if I can, man. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be real here. I don't know if I can. I. I. I, I feel I like it. I, maybe Don Brothers. Maybe Don Brothers. Like it just sounds so. Out Don there. Brothers. I think I could probably vibe with because it's written by Toshiki Inoue. What did he do? Common Rider Fies. Gotcha. He also has done a lot of other stuff. But Kamen Rider Fies is probably one of his more infamous things. Dom Brothers, there's there's a reason it's a memor it's a, it's apparently a very memorable Sentai for certain reasons. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but you'll just have to find out someday. Eventually, maybe. maybe. Hopefully, you should. I don't know. I I I firmly believe it. There might be a future where I'm more acquainted with Kamen Rider than I am Super Sentai or Power Rangers. I mean, yeah, I'm more acquainted with Kamen Rider. I actually like that guy. He's pretty cool. I do well, I do genuinely really want to watch the original uh, Go, uh, Go Ranger, though. Got, that, yeah, I, think I, I think I would legitimately enjoy that a lot. I, I plan eventually, once I finish Kamen Rider Garo, um, I plan on watching Super Sentai and Power Rangers back, like back to back. Um, oh Jesus! But it, the trademark for the show was fire uh, filed September first, twenty twenty three, and I know there's been a lot of excitement, but also it seems like a lot of concern as yeah, well. Yeah, I heard. I heard people want to be excited on the design lakes, which, to my understanding, are real. From what I understand. <laughs> I, I know very little about Super Sentai. I just, you know, I, I've basically, I've said everything I know about Super Sentai in this recording. Right. It's, it's great for people who follow that, but we're not very qualified in talking about Sentai, I'm this sad to true. say. But we are more, we are qualified in talking about Subaraya Productions and Ultraman. Yes. Which Ultraman Blazar will be finishing up its last handful of episodes it's on like 22 right now it's probably got like three to five episodes left yeah um, yeah and then following that you'll get you know the yearly ultraman new gen recap <laughs> tv series right don't we have uh is it ultraman new generation star season two i believe that was the title yeah yeah i don't i all i know is like it just recaps everything i don't know anything really about it yeah it's yeah it's pretty much just like the same it's kind of just the same deal like yeah here's like a vague excuse for a recap show we'll bring back like one of the actors to play like to voice like ultraman zero or something so that they can recap it or maybe ultraman g or whatever <laughs> I, I don't tend to follow these recap shows i'm gonna be honest i i'm so far behind on on this stuff that i don't i don't know a lot about the newer ultraman but i i just know a lot of people weren't too excited with the announcement um i even saw somebody say like it's like oh, super is starting to run out of 
ideas um, when it comes to like padding out the the gap between episode between seasons, the movies, and the next season. I'm going to be honest. I don't know if I really care if Super is running out of ideas for how to make a how to reinvent a recap show. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if I'm too mad about that. Being it just. Here. The way I've always viewed the whole recap thing is it's just another way for Subaraya to make content in between making good content. Yeah, exactly. Like I'll I'll take this if um we get more shows like Blazer or something. Right. And honestly, like you don't even need to watch them. Like if if you are genuinely not interested in them, it's not going to hurt you at all to my understanding. Mm-hmm. There's like nothing they establish. I mean, there's like tiny little law bits, to be fair, but like nothing crazy, from what I understand. So, I mean, sometimes you, you like some of these shows do give hints as to what like the next ultra series might be. Like, oh, the one before Trigger came out was ultra had was uh like had Ultraman Tiga recap in it. Oh, the one before Decca was recapping Ultraman Dino had him involved in some way. But, like, this one doesn't really seem to hint at anything, so, you know. See, I... Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. It is what it is. We've got a ton of Ultraman stuff coming out soon. We do. Such as Ultraman Blazer the movie, Tokyo Kaiju Showdown. I love that title. It's very Showa. Hmm. Announced at SuperIacon this year, it will be coming out to Japanese theaters in February of 2024. Specifically... February the twenty third. I and I'm curious. Realistically, when... we'll probably come out to Ultraman Connection like very shortly after that, based on the Ultraman Trigger and Ultraman Decker movie. Right, and I'm curious if they're going to do a dub. Surely they will, because the show has been dubbed. Probably, yeah. So I think there's a dub for the Decker movie. There, uh, may there should be. They they have dubbed. Every film from Ginga S, I think, to present. I'm pretty sure there's a dub for the Decca movie. I think. That sounds about right. That yeah, sounds no, I've about seen right. the trailer for it. It looks pretty cool. I like Blazer. I need to catch up. I really See, need I'm, to catch up. I'm so far behind. That's great. It's a good show. Eventually I'll watch it. <laughs> And uh, Taguchi-san, who I've met, is uh, returning to direct, as far as I'm aware. Nice flex. Yeah. <laughs> I, I met him in between my short film showing and my Korean kaiju panel at G-Fest. Nice flex. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Outside of that, we've also got the origin of Ultraman. This is, is a- probably my most anticipated project from Subaraya next year. Mm, yeah, this is a documentary just detailing the creation of Ultraman. And we do have some involvement with Guillermo del Toro, who will be in yeah. the documentary. Um, I'm sure he's just... I, I'm sure they're just going to have him be there as like talking about what Ultraman means to him and whatnot. I right. feel like that's what yeah. it'll end up being. Uh but nonetheless, it's still cool to see him working with Subaraya. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And um, hey, I'll I'll take a I'll take a new documentary about the original Ultraman if it's probably going to be distributed to the West. Probably get official subs. It sound the way it sounds like they are wanting everything that they produce to also be available stateside. Um. Which is amazing to see uh, a Japanese company attempt to do. So, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where I think we will we will see it stateside, and I think it's going to be very, um, right, very fun and enlightening to people who don't know that much about Subaraya and Ultraman and whatnot. Mm. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> I'm pretty excited for it. Um, but if we're going away from what I would say is the exciting stuff, um, just because I, I'm not very well 
versed or in like involved in the new gen Ultraman stuff. We have Hollyhock Squirrel Girl versus Ultraman, which is a TV miniseries, which is female led. It's a drama and it takes place in the new generation Ultraman series. Um, it's a very, I'd like, there's not a lot of information and I'm curious what they're going to do with it. Um, but just based off of what limited info we've been given, I'm not too excited. Hmm. I mean, I'm, I it's one of those things where I don't really know what to make of it at the moment. Right. Like, I'm interested in it in the sense of it's seemingly going to be some a new take on an Ultraman series, but like the announcement that it's set within the new generation uh, Ultra worldview, that's interesting, but I just don't know what to make of that. Right. It's it's just one of those things. It'll I'll have to wait to see it and see if it's something that like entices me and interests me, or like what. It's just going to be something I'm going to have to hold my breath and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, I'm willing to give it a chance. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> and I feel like that's the same with the next thing on our list, which is Kaiju Haven, a nine episode TV miniseries based off of kids' books written by Yoichi Komori. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, to my understanding, is just like a short little uh, miniseries focusing on the various ultra kaiju. Right. And apparently, it's the first of like phase one of a project. So maybe it'll become more than just, you know, a nine mm. episode mini series. Not a lot is known. None of these projects were really given a lot of information just outside the fact that they're happening. Right. Yeah. And alongside that, as well as the darkness heals anime. Um, another thing that doesn't have a lot of information about it. Right. Like it's image just from it. And um, isn't you know what darkness heals is, which is, it's basically just like a, a spin-off story about um, various Ultraman villains, such as Ultraman Belio, uh, Kamira from Ultraman Tiga, Dark Zagi, Jugglus Juggler, and sometimes Evil Tiga is there as well, I think. <laughs> I think they confirmed Evil Tiga for this one. Interesting. See, again, I, I'm not, you know versed enough in this stuff to be remotely excited or interested just because I, I I don't know anything about it. Um, one thing I'm not too excited for, but I do know a little bit about is, uh, the upcoming animated film, Ultraman rising streaming internationally on Netflix in 2024, which was produced in America with Subaraya overseeing production to my understanding it's animated in the style of like the Spider Verse films, but still looks awful. I wouldn't say I, awful. It looks I, okay. There's some <sighs> things I'm not a fan of. I'm not a big fan of that um, baby kaiju design, and I think Ultraman's a bit too top heavy, but like otherwise, I, the I can't dialogue stand, is awful. <laughs> yes, the dialogue is absolutely awful. Um, the the trailer that has dropped for that has done nothing to make me excited or interested. Mm. Um, I could care less. Like, honestly, that trailer made me say, yep, this is why Ultraman should not be touched. It's just the film screams Hollywood blockbuster superhero movie. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, there's uh, the nothing good and bad that. that comes from that. Yeah. And it just it, it just sounds like everything that makes Ultraman special is just not there. Yeah, but I'll still give it a watch. <laughs> I will Regardless. too, but I, I still have to I finish have... season three of Ultraman before I watch Ultraman Rising, just because... Oh my god, man. Yeah. I, I watched season two, and then I stopped. Well, at I least think you that, made some progress. Yeah, that, I think that's mostly because I was watching Rebirth, Gamma Rebirth, so then I also watched Ultraman Season 2 while yeah. I was at it. Um, I have Season 3 of Ultraman, and then I think is Pacific Rim the Black, is there three seasons of that? Two? So I gotta watch Season 2 of that. 
and then I'm all caught up on on uh, anime on Netflix. That's Kaiju Tokusatsu. Mm. But moving on, the last uh, last little bit of Super Riot information is also that, of course, we'll be getting a Yuli Ultraman series with the title having only just been uh, revealed through trademarks as Ultraman R. Which I'm curious to see what that'll bring. I love what Subaru is doing with the release pattern. You know, dubbing the film, subtitling it, simulcasting on YouTube, uh, internationally. I love that. I think it's doing great, and I, I, I love just seeing the fandom interact with that. I think that's such a beautiful thing to see. Right. So hmm. that's yeah. that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I I hope this new series is. Just as good, if not better, than Blazer. Yeah, because a lot of people have been praising Blazer. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, people really like the direction that Blazer has gone, and you know, while Blazer still did have to um, submit a little bit to the demands of Bandai, hopefully, you know, if if it was successful enough, maybe Bandai will loosen their grip a little more. Yeah, and a little more. Yeah. And more creative freedom will go to Taguchi and others. I agree, and 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 that's that's the goal. I think that's the goal for Subarai as well. Is just to get to a point where Bandai will not be watching over their every them movie. Into submission. Yeah, but while we're on the topic of of distribution and acknowledgement and recognition, in terms of the Daiei Katakawa catalog we are getting the uh u.s release of the great yokai war guardians next year on blu-ray dvd and vhs through srs cinema yeah. um, are we also getting the manga as well i think so yeah i think the manga is confirmed um the extras on the blu-ray include the making of featurette the japanese trailer srs trailers subtitles and a bonus feature titled eugene's thoughts on the yokai and daimajin films Oh yeah, hmm. which uh, I'm excited, and I I've already pre-ordered the VHS and the <laughs> Blu-ray. Um, I will be purchasing. Um, I, I I will watch them. I will enjoy them. Um, I will see Sakura Ando and and Rinosuke oh, yeah. Kamiki. Um, in the film, I will enjoy Daimajin. I will enjoy Takashi Miike. But I cannot help but think that this film should have went to somebody that was a little bit higher profile and a bit better on production value on releases than SRS Cinema. I'm sorry, but uh, there's something about it. Like it just it doesn't scream. It, it's not going to work with what my Arrow video, what my Katakawa Dae DVD catalog, DVD and Blu-ray catalog is because it's filled <laughs> with Arrow video. Um, and then what isn't Arrow Video is like a nice little like indie release or something, but that's got like nice liner notes and whatnot, just very informative and something that like I I'm excited to in- watch. Um, there's nothing on this Blu-ray that screams like, oh great, this is going to help me understand the context of this film. I'm not I mean, going to at least a, there is at least some making of footage. So that's good. Yeah. I mean, and you know, that's something I'm not too shocked about because it seems like all of me K's uh, releases get stuff like that, which is nice. I, I enjoy seeing stuff like that. The only unfortunate thing is it's region a exclusive, so it won't be able to get released uh, or like shipped out outside of that out, outside Cringe. of region a. That's a shame. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, but well. it does have some beautiful artwork by Bob Eggleton on it. I will say I love I love seeing Bob's artwork. Hmm. But alas, that appears to be the only thing of note from Katakawa at this point in time. Yeah, because um, it, it's it's don't sad. To s- right. They, they don't produce a lot. And Arrow Video has like stepped away from the Japanese genre, um, which is a shame. It, it's a real shame because they were like they granted the ring. they are doing a Dark Water, uh, 4K. 4K. That's right, but 
that's just a re-release because they had the 4K transfer. Yeah. It's the same thing they did with Ring. Um, yeah. They ha- already had the 4K transfer. They just put it on a 4K disc and re and just put it back out. Yeah, but still, better than nothing. <laughs> True, <laughs> but moving on to Toho just announced was a brand new uh, edit of Godzilla minus one. A yes. Decolorization, if you will, Godzilla minus one minus color. You know, I can't help but think that the reason that minus one minus color is happening is because Shin Godzilla ortho like actually did pretty decent. Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I imagine this is what they were teasing, what uh, what's Shinsuke Kasai was teasing at Godzilla Fest this year. <laughs> what was it he said? He be- he mentioned something about, like, more some more black and white stuff in the future. That's and Yamazaki right. Yamazaki was worried about him spilling the, spilling the beans on some stuff. So I imagine this is what he was, ki- what he was concerned about. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Now... I would love to see this get released in the States. I doubt it. It comes out January 12th in Japan. Mm. I'm going to be honest. I don't care much for it. (laughs) So, but apparently what it is. So apparently they like went and matted things differently and like went in and like edited it to make it look different. Yeah. But. I will say this, the CGI doesn't look, it doesn't hold up. Um, I feel this movie really is made to be in color. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I love Yamazaki's color palette. So losing that, I don't, from what I've seen, doesn't, it looks like it might work in the Ginza sequence. Yeah. But like the, what shot we got from Odo Island with Proto Godzilla just doesn't look good. Oh yeah, no, that shot in particular does not look the greatest. No. Um I am not that stuff like that's like mm, I'll go see it if it's offered. I'm not rushing to see it. No, I'd I'd rather just watch the film as it originally came out. As it was intended. You know, it's in black and white films, the reason black and white films work is because they were shot with the intention of it being in black and white. Black the, and white, yeah. The lighting and the contrast was done specifically to work that way. Um, so the fact that, you know, they're trying to retrofit it to a colorized version, I, I, just, I, I don't think that, or retrofit into a black and white version from a color film, I, it just doesn't work. Mm. Um, yeah. And I mean, the obvious thing here is it's Toho trying to continue to make money. money. Yeah. Um, Toho definitely knows this film is doing them very good. It's doing them well. They're making their money. I think they're hoping that they can hit Shin Godzilla numbers. Um, Internationally, I think is what they're looking at, like on an international scale, which I mean, mean, they just hit 4.5 billion yen. Uh, just today, so like just was announced, which is really good. I believe that means it's officially on par with Return of Godzilla. If not, it's like very close. It's like very close at absolute worst. So yeah, so yeah, minus one's doing pretty good. And you know, it's it's only going to do better. Um, it's still got a long. It's still got a few weeks left in America. It just released in South Africa. It has yet to be released in China or South Korea. Um, I'm curious if after the new year it's allowed to be released in those territories. And I'm curious what that might do to the box office. Um, I hope it. I hope that adds to it. I, I hope that makes it um, perform even better than we think it will end up. Hmm. Um, we'll see. In terms... Now, it hit... 4.5 billion yen, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For Japanese box office. So when you look at so when you it's so it's it's passion ultraman. So it's it's the second highest grossing kaiju film since, you know, 
for now, for the since for the last ten years. Uh, Bad. The only thing it's not beating is is Shin Godzilla, which has basically double. It insane. Yeah. In terms of attendance, however, do you know the numbers on attendance? Um, not the up to date numbers. No, no. Gotcha. Because that's the but most. It was last I saw. It was pretty close to Shin Ultraman, so it'll probably be either slightly under it or about the same. Gotcha. So I that's you know that stuff's exciting. Um, maybe slightly higher. I know the projections that I've been hearing is it's going to end up doing. Uh, I'm hearing they're hoping for five billion yen. Yeah, the it, box office wise, yeah, five million yen is the billion. Five billion yen is the projected amount that it's going to really uh, get in Japan. Which I mean, that's still really good. That's still like really. Shin really Godzilla good. just did too too good. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of like records of attendance, it might pass Return of Godzilla. It's not going to go much further than that, probably. Mm. Um, yeah, but nonetheless, I mean, it's still like that's still upper like over halfway up the list, like. That's still really, really good. Uh, and like it's made its budget back in Japan. And if you take into consideration the international box office, minus one is definitely going to end up beating Shin Godzilla, which on an international level of box office, Shin Godzilla is the highest grossing Japanese Godzilla film. Mm-hmm. So, of course, not adjusted for inflation at all, but. It, either way, like it's it's going to end up doing good on a international level, which it really feels like that's what Toho planned this film to be was an international film. Um, it's it's going to do exactly what it was supposed to. Mm. Yeah, but outside of this new release of minus one, I'm sure sometime in 2024 it'll also get its physical release <laughs> in Japan right. at least. I, I see it getting its physical next year in America as well. Probably, I would say no earlier than summer 2024. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I think I think early, I think summer 2024 is even being nice. Because it's not going to be out of theaters until probably, I'm going to guess, mid to late January, latest early February. Um I think I mean, by that I don't see a, I don't see a Western Blu-ray coming out until after the Japanese Blu-ray, so you know. Right, which is point. why I don't see a Japanese Blu-ray until probably spring, like late Bro, spring. There isn't early even a summer. Japanese Blu-ray for Shin Kamen Rider yet. But that's also because that movie didn't do well. I mean, and it's Toei. I mean, it's so you'd think that movie would have a Blu-ray by now. Hmm. Not necessarily. I mean, Shin Godzilla had a Blu-ray within a year. Um, Dino Zenon has a Blu-ray. What the hell happened to Shin Kamen Rider? I, I, I legitimately believe that's simply because Shin Kamen Rider did not do well. Mm. There's not a rush to put it out. Mm. Well, regardless, outside of Minus One, it's various releases. Next year, we will also be seeing from Toho Fest Godzilla 5. All Monster Showdown. The potentially last short film? Question maybe? mark? No, um, no, there's no actual confirmation of things stating that. We're just speculating. Right. It's going to be celebrating the anniversaries of Ghidorah. Godzilla. Maybe Mecha Godzilla? Your speculation. My speculation. Um, and there's we'll a probably little... probably also feature Jet Jaguar. It will feature Jet Jaguar. Maybe Mothra? I could see Mothra. No, because Mothra showed up in 61. I don't think they're going to celebrate her 64 film. Maybe if, maybe if they can't find anyone else to bring out a prop for. <laughs> yeah. But I, I definitely see them doing Mecha Godzilla because they've been celebrating all of the 70s. So they would obviously want to celebrate Mecha Godzilla, but they also are going to... Well, clearly they'll do a King Caesar uh, suit, you know? Hmm. I think that's going to be saved for the gemstone GVKC. Oh, yeah. There will also be a gemstone shot. 
Can't yeah. forget that. So we'll see what comes of that. But outside of that... Both will come out November 3rd, of course, during the Godzilla Fest streams. Right. And another thing that's coming out, or I guess wrapping up next year, that Toho co-produced is the Le Legendary Pictures Monarch Legacy of Monsters TV show. The last two episodes will air in 2024 and will tie in with the film Godzilla X Kong The New Empire. Supposedly. According to reports. Uh, yeah. Which, you know, I don't, I don't know how to feel about that. You, you, you don't need to tie in a good series with uh, that movie. I'm going to be real here. See, I th I feel like it's to be expected. I've, I'd like, I it's... understand it, but, you know, keep it away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and I guess, I mean, we still need to see the last episode, but from where we left off on, it was doing, it was, it was all right. It wasn't amazing. Um, I like the show. It's fun. I think, I think it's starting to stagnate in terms of getting better. Um, uh, I think we're, we're almost plateauing. I think like if, if this was like keeping track of something like to see how successful it was, I think it's, I don't think it's going to beat G Kong skull Island for like my top spot in the monster verse. Um, I think it's going to stay at number two. I think it's plateaued in terms of making me enjoy it. Mm. I feel it's, I feel it kind of just needs to like, I don't know how to put it. Just like, let it just like kind of indulge with the audience a bit with like the monster action, just a little bit, just a little more than what it's doing. Or give our characters something to do. I mean, the, the characters are fine. It's just, I feel like their limitations with what they can do with the monsters might also be holding back the, I think that's what's holding back the 50 story. a bit. But regardless, see, we'll see where the show goes, I suppose. We will. And we'll, as the show concludes, we're going to see where it goes with Godzilla X Kong, which also comes out next year, April 12th, 2024. Or 11th, if you like me, and live and get to see it a day or technically two early. See. Happy. I would say happy days, but I don't know if this is a movie to be all that happy for. Um, yeah, the, the trailer is out. We've talked about it. I'm not a big fan. I could care less about it. It just, it like. Hey, Godzilla's in it. I'm, I kind of like that guy, so. I'll I don't know. I'll him through thick and thin. Adam Wingard's directing it, so I'm not too excited. I I did um uh, in my in my journal, as you know, I I scheduled that time off. Um, uh, I got a request it off officially, but I I will be seeing Godzilla X Kong. I do plan on seeing it a total of three times, um, Screen X, IMAX, and then maybe like 4D. Yeah, 4D would be fun for it. That's probably what I'm going to see it in. Just, uh, just, just to, you know, I'll go watch it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like indulge myself in it. Like I am minus one or anything like that. Just, you know, it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Um, I at least expect the film to be fun. I don't know. Maybe it'll be boring. We'll see. But outside of that, there is, there's rumors that a uh, season two of Monarch will, be occurring given you know, uh, Writers Guild of America listings for a season two expected sometime for 2024 to 2025. So, you know, that's, I'll, I'll take more Monarch. If well, I'm curious. Gonna continue, I'll take more Monarch. I'm curious what they're going to do because in an interview, and you brought this up, they, they said that this season's all about Godzilla. I'd be curious if the way they approach it is the movies follow Kong and the shows about Godzilla going forward. Hmm. That'd be um, interesting. Because Toho is co-producing them. So Toho has like some say in it, which they might be more okay with than having Godzilla show up in the movies because they want to do their own films. Because there is talks of like Godzilla minus one, two, Nothing official. Don't take that out of context. Nothing's confirmed. Nothing's official. 
But there are talks, and I think Toho wants to start producing their own films again on a regular basis. And it might be better to keep Godzilla in the mainstream if they're doing like a show based around him week to week in between. I mean, a lot of people are liking Monarch and like the yeah. people I know, like general audiences like it. So, yeah, keep it going for a little bit. Why not? I like the show. I, um, I mean, I would, I would watch a season two. I'm, I'm very indifferent. I could take it or leave it. I'll take more Kurt Russell, please. I mean, that is true. Kurt Russell is a fun actor to watch in this show. So maybe if Kurt Russell were to, I, I will have a better idea of what I want after the season finale. That's going to be my, like the giveaway is, is the season finale something that's like, okay, yeah, I want to see more or am I okay with this being it? Hmm. But yeah, outside of the Godzilla stuff, Toho is also involved in an anime adaptation of the shonen manga series Kaiju Number no. Eight, which is getting its uh, adaptation releasing in April of 2024. Now, do you know anything? Uh, I, I've I've debated on purchasing the mangas. I have not purchased the mangas. Do you know anything about Kaiju Number Eight? I haven't read it, but I know a little bit of it. It's basically like, I mean, it's a shonen manga series, so shonen is like, uh, like early to mid teenage boys, uh, series, like same sort of early Attack on Titan, My Hero Academia, early JoJo's that type uh, audience, so set in a world where kaiju are common common cause of disaster in japan there's a anti-kaiju defense team and i want to say the main character has like some sort of kaiju suit yes um that he uses to fight against them with and that's about as far as i know for the premise okay so we're we're both kind of in the same boat i hear it comes- i hear it starts off as an absolute banger and kind of falls off a bit <laughs> the manga Gotcha. But it's currently still ongoing, so maybe it'll maybe it'll get great again. Who knows? Maybe. I feel like that's a lot of manga though. They start off good or like they start off really bad but end really good. I don't watch a lot of I don't uh, watch. I don't read a lot of manga. I'm going to be real. I don't either. That's just kind of the the general consensus I've heard from what little conversations I've had with people about manga. I'd have to ask my friends about that. <laughs> Yeah, no, int, uh, it's being distributed um, on Japanese TV networks such as TV Tokyo and then simulcast worldwide on Twitter or places. Which is very weird. Yeah, but apparently Crunchyroll also has licensed it for distribution, so I'm going to assume it's also coming to Crunchyroll. Probably. But I'd yeah, be curious totally, if they commission the dub. Part. Well, I know that X is promoting the whole like live streaming and like video aspect of their because that was that's a new thing they're trying to do and they're trying to get people into yeah. it. Um, and to my understanding, a lot of major media outlets have like stopped working with X oh. or on X. Like, if you go oh. and look at the Godzilla X Kong account, they haven't posted since, like, November. Um, and the trailer's already dropped, but they didn't post the trailer. Um, Damn. Yeah, so Warner Brothers has, like, pulled out of all marketing on Twitter. So has, I want to say, Disney and Paramount. Or it's wow. Sony. Damn. That kind of goes to show <laughs> the state of Twitter. A little bit, yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know what, uh, what they're doing, but I imagine this is partially their attempt to like, maybe bring in like the anime fans to Twitter because start stuff will be like simulcast on there. Hmm. That's funny though. Yeah. Outside of that, that's more or less it from Toho, I believe. 
Right, and there's nothing from Nikatsu or Shochiku, um, which is always sad when when we get nothing from any other major Japanese studio. But it's pretty par for the course. However, there is plenty of independent stuff. And that's kind of where I'm thriving at. I thrive in the independent department of, of Kaiju now. The biggest one coming next year is the release of Keizo Murase's Brush of the God. Um, it's been in production since 2021. Uh, Daisuke Sato, director of Howl from Beyond the Fog, worked on it. He helped design the suits and whatnot. He was cinematographer, I believe. Um, this is Murase-san's uh, uh, directorial debut. He's the one who designed like the Gamera suit and the Mothra suit and Ghidorah and Varen and all of these classic Showa kaiju. Um, yeah. It's a film about Orochi and a couple other kaiju. And it look like the, the cinematography and what we've seen so far looks amazing. It looks pretty cool. It is tokusatsu effects, of course, which is always a warm welcome. I can't wait to see this film. Likewise, I'm pretty excited for it as well. It looked pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> and i and i really enjoyed how from beyond the fog so yeah it's it's been a long time coming but it's nice it's actually getting a wide theatrical release in japan they found a distributor to pick it up and it they will be That's distributing good. it yeah so the the film got extra funding as well all that stuff it's always i'm always happy to hear stuff like that happen brilliant stuff Another film that's not necessarily as, you know, well known, but definitely has been making the rounds with its promotion is Hot Springs Shark Attack, which is about a giant shark that attacks, I want to say it's Shinagawa. Um, film, the production is basically over. They're going to do English subs. I believe nice. it's basically confirmed to be releasing by SRS Cinema. Um mm. It it will be practical effects, and it's aiming for a spring 2024 release. Um, I think they're trying to go streaming mostly, but I do know that there is hope to get it internationally distributed. And I imagine SRS Cinema is in the runnings for that because it's a shark Probably. movie, and it's Japanese, and it's tokusatsu. Mm. Yeah, and speaking of shark movies, I'm sure you're excited to... To know that uh, Minoru Kawasaki is currently working on a brand new film. Yeah, the only unfortunate thing is, and it's you're talking about Game of Shark, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, and the only unfortunate thing about that is it's not planned to actually come out till 2025. Which, when they announced it, I was like, "Oh, great! I can't wait for a Kawasaki film next year." And then I saw, "Oh no, it's 2025." <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you on. On the topic of like animals, like sea animals, there, while not a very high likelihood, there is a chance we could get Jellyfish Eyes Part 2 Maha Shank next year. Um, mm -hmm. It's a sequel to the film Jellyfish Eyes from 2013, I want to say. The sequel yeah, was okay. originally announced at the end of the first film, there was like a trailer for it. However, the director, uh, Takashi Murakami, was he was like working on the film until 2020 when, due to COVID, he had to shut down production and scrap the film. However, February 10th of 2022, he announced that production was starting again with some VFX footage from the film, which it looks amazing. The VFX looks stellar. I don't know if it'll come out next year. The director's been doing a lot of like art galleries because he's an artist. He's like a contemporary artists oh yeah he's a pretty job. famous artist yeah <laughs> um he's worked with like blackpink the k-pop girl group um he's worked with them i know he was doing a lot of nft stuff um Oof. but he's been busy so i don't know if we'll get it next year but i mean there's always a chance mm. and i love the first jellyfish eyes i think it's a very heartwarming film um, i admittedly still have to say it a lot of people say that it's awful. I don't I don't I don't necessarily agree with I'll them. be the judge of that. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, but yeah, following along with uh 
uh, independent kaiju stuff here. Midnight the Era should be wrapping up filming shortly and hopefully releasing in spring of 2024. I'm also 2022 there. My bad. I'm really excited to see Midnight the Era. It's a tokusatsu. So the kaiju are tokusatsu, but everything else, the characters in the backgrounds and whatnot, the sets are kind of tokusatsu. There's There are tokusatsu like miniatures, but there's also a lot of animation. It's a right. tokusatsu anime. It's it's basically Eisenborg, but more anime. Right. Which is exciting to see. It looks good. From from the test footage we've seen, it, it looks actually pretty interesting. Um, it is a short film, and it's confirmed to have an SRS release as well. Um, good to hear. So that's something I'm excited to see how it turns out. Um, I know they're wrapping up filming. And they're moving on to like the animation and composition and whatnot. So we're going to see what happens with that one. That one, I think, could end up being one of the like highlights of next year for me. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I think it could be. I think it'll be interesting to see. And it's a short film as well, from what I understand, right? Yeah, it's it's being marketed as a short film. I don't know what that necessarily means. It yeah, could I remember its minutes. original announcement was like 30 minutes ish. Yeah. I said of that, um, Hoshi 35 should hopefully be getting its uh, a wide release in 2024. It, though it did already have its premiere and initial release just a couple months ago, if I recall correctly, in November. Yeah, it's and for anybody who doesn't know, it's Megumi Odaka's 35th anniversary project from her start in film. Um, Produced by Free Y. Who Done did like, uh, Nezra, Great Buddha, right? Blank so, film, one other um, film. they did Hetera Spring or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I'm excited to see if I SRS has worked with 3Y, so I could see them picking it up again as well. Um, but from everything I've heard, like it's it's yeah, actually definitely. it's a pretty confident production, so I'm excited to see what what that brings to the table and three Y has been establishing itself as a pretty, pretty well-rounded indie company in Japan. And then alongside that comes the newest film of camera Four director Shinpei Hayashiya. Yes. With uh war of the ninja monsters, Jeron versus Gora, which I got has already camera spoof. Yeah, it's it's a it's a spoof. Um it's already had its like premiere, but it we recently got confirmation that SRS Cinema will be really releasing it early 2024. Um that's a running theme here is SRS Cinema's it sounds like they're going to be busy next year. Um I'm kind of excited because they had an off year this year when it comes to Kaiju and Toku. I, you know, God Riker versus King Oga was no bueno by any means, but I'd like to think this film he was able to spend a little more time on, have a larger budget. Um, I so guess I'm, we'll I'm, just have to find out. Yeah, that'll be one to see how well it does. <laughs> we also have one that may not come out next year called Blue Kaiju. The cast has already been decided, but the the Kickstarter campaign only got like a sixth of its actual funding. Um, it's also apparently like normal size Kaiju and it's very much behind schedule because they haven't started filming yet, um, which they were supposed to start filming like at the beginning of December. So it sounds like they're really, really, really behind um, and they don't have the budget that they were initially planning on having. So we'll see what happens with that. That may just be one of those projects that quietly just disappears. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, nonetheless, what updates come from that one. Right. And then I know you, I, I imagine you're excited for the upcoming SRS video or SRS cinema release of Yuzo, the biggest battle in Tokyo. I am. I'm, I, I mean, I've already seen the movie. So like for me, I it's like oh yeah, I know that movie. But I I love uh, Yoshikazu Ishii's films, and it's a it's a fun movie. It's I'm happy that people are finally going to be able to see it. Hmm. 
Yeah, it looks pretty fun. Kaiju design is pretty cool. And, you know, I, I love the fact it's in response to COVID-19. I think it's got some very fun characters. Um, you guys will get to see what I would define as one of the best kaiju musicals <laughs> um, oh. that we've gotten. There's not a lot of them, but what there say, are. Say like, I don't know if I could name one another one off the top of my head, unless you want to count that one scene from Def Kappa. The Rebirth of Mothra trilogy? Oh, yeah. Outside of that, a uh, little SRS cinema trend continues and seemingly comes to an end for now with Welsha. Another, it's, that film's coming out the same time Yuzo is to Blu-ray, DVD, and streaming, late March 2024. Um, it does have a short film on the Blu-ray titled Shark oh. of the Dead, which is a prequel to the next shark movie this director did called Love Shark. Um, I have no idea, but this is a ring parody with a shark. Which is certainly a premise. It it's is certainly a premise, a premise of all time. And I'm sure when we watch it, you're gonna love it. I'm sure I'll make I'll make something of it. Maybe I'll like it. I hope I'll Maybe like it'll it. be enduring. Maybe it takes itself serious enough where you'll Maybe. actually be I able like, to enjoy I, it. I watched a movie called Ouija Shock, and I actually I had fun with that. Hey, I know the director of that. We worked together. That was I had fun with that movie. The sequel looks really fun too. One film I am looking forward to um simply because i feel like we have a connection to this film um that will be coming out next year kaiju island of fire currently in post-production the beginning of a franchise of kaiju films aiming for an international release in may of 2024 mm. now i don't want to say a lot on the film <laughs> simply because you should stay tuned to our feed in like Next month. Just saying. Mm, I wonder what that could be for. <laughs> Just to wait and see. Yeah, no, likewise. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty in, very much interested in seeing seeing how Kaju Island of Fire develops over time. <laughs> likewise, likewise. Now it's also worthy to mention there's a few titles that are potentially coming out next year. Nothing's Maybe. really confirmed. Of course, the obvious one, Cloverfield 2.4, which apparently... I'd like to hear something about that someday. Yeah, because, like, the film, as far as I know, wasn't under the writer's strike because it was done by the time it was... I mean, actor's strike probably didn't help. The actor's strike definitely put the kibosh on it for a little bit. But, like, surely they're filming by now. Or, or about least... to be, hopefully. Yeah, like there's there's no way that they're not in production or like gearing up for it. They have a they have a writer, they have a director, producers are already set in place, like they've already announced the film. They need to like they should be about to produce that one. Um hmm. another title announced uh is the Project Nemesis show. I want to say it's a TV show. Nothing's been confirmed. We don't even know if they're filming yet. So that one probably won't happen. Um, another yeah, one that least. is filmed is The What, which is like a giant 50s bug movie. The Kickstarter was funded, so like it should be coming out, but there's been no updates. Um, have you heard anything about the New Zealand kaiju movie, Taniwa? Nope, not really. Oh, well... All I know is that they said it's happening, um, but they have like a director. They had the writer. They didn't have the actors or writer strike. So I'm sure like surely that film is coming out next year. I mean, that film wouldn't really be affected by the actors strike, given that's America. Right. So I don't see how that would affect a New Zealand production. So I imagine that will be coming out next year. So we might Unless say getting a, an American star. <laughs> yeah. So I imagine we're going to be seeing that film next year. And the last one is the SRS announced self-produced film Kaiju Glam Shark Attack. Oh, which is a, 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 a movie. I think getting a lot of stuff from SRS next year, man. 
I wouldn't say Kaiju Glam Shark Attack is one to look forward to. It's wow. about like a rock and roll shark that's like the size of a kaiju. I mean, hey, you never know. It can't, mm. be, it can't be worse than GXK. Mm. I feel like that one might. I mean, it's it's on par with like Ukatina, Armageddon, Zilla Foot, and Conga TNT. I'm pretty sure those are a little lower than GVK. Maybe, but let me cope. Okay. I just want to insult bad movie. Bad, bad Hollywood movie. We need more foreign films. We do. And they need better distribution. I want to see Monster again. <sighs> but speaking of foreign films, uh, we do have an upcoming Blu-ray release from Era 44444 for the Thai film Thrilling Bloody Sword. Which does have some dragons and some kaiju action in air quotes. Kaiju in air quotes. And I'll be getting to see it in theaters. Lucky. For free. Even luckier. Yeah. Now what I'm excited for, they they announced that in 2022 with a release date of 2023. Um, They ended up only doing like two titles this year. And then they did a surprise announcement of Scissor Penis. Yeah. Which I ordered. I know. Of from course. our from our good friend Stacy director Tomomatsu. <laughs> Your favorite. Which when I read the I it's funny. When I told you that I bought it, I said, Do you know who the director is? And you said, I don't know. And I said, before you look it up, let me read you the synopsis. <laughs> and no, I think two- I did already know the director. Actually, I don't remember. I don't think you did because I read it and you're like, oh, this is the director of Stacy. And I said, yep. You are no, on you the No, you didn't money. tell me what film it was at first, I think. Oh, I just read Maybe. it off. That yes. sounds right. Yeah, because I did know that Scissor Penis was directed by Tomatsu. Yeah. And I bought the like bundle version from Error four four four, that included the condom. I paid yeah. fifty bucks for a condom. Congratulations! Are you ever going to use it? Not that one. Ah, <laughs> uh, you saving it for the right person? I think we should cut this part out. <laughs> no. But I am excited to see what comes of Thrilling Bloody Sword. That's been a title I've been anxiously awaiting for now almost two years. Um, I I mean, I love what Error 4444 has done. I think their Funky Forest, Warped Forest, and and Entomia Extinction releases have been very solid. Um, And I want to see more from them. I want to see them continue to release stuff. I'm excited for Scissor Penis. That's a sentence I just said. Um, Yeah. And, you know, Thrilling Bloody Sword hopefully will be the next title they announce or release. And then I'm excited to see what else, because I want I want more stuff from them. They are like a independent version of Arrow, Arrow Video, and I love it. Yeah, they seem pretty cool. They release some cool stuff. Well, yeah, it's that everything more or less for now. Yeah. Um, there's still plenty of time for other companies to announce things, acquisitions. And of course, there is other Tokusatsu stuff like the upcoming Garo show next month, Kamen Rider, V Cinemas, etc., etc. Now, before we wrap things up here, I do think it's important to note we're getting a lot next year. It's it's interesting to see, and I I, I don't remember who I was talking to about this, but. On Kaiju Weekly, when I was doing that, I mentioned I I I, I caused a stir, just to cause a stir. Um, but I, did. I I was bringing something up that was kind of important, and that was it felt like the Kaiju Renaissance was kind of dying down a little bit. In 2019, we not only had like the King of the Monsters and whatnot, but we had a flood of Ultraman content. Um, Shout Factory was working on Tokushatsu. SRS was releasing titles like Crazy, uh, Arrow, 
Arrow Video was doing Gamera, Criterion was doing Godzilla, um, and like that stuff, 2019, 2020, all was like fueling the fire, right? Mm. Yeah. But suddenly in 2021, 2022, partially due to COVID, of course, that died. Like that momentum just stopped. Part of that was Mill Creek had supply and demand issues and ran out of Ultraman content. Arrow lost their main acquisitions leader, who was the one doing all of the Japanese acquisitions. Um, Criterion ran out of titles to acquire from Toho to release. Um, but they won't put them on physical for their non-Godzilla stuff. Right, which is weird. Um Media Blasters is trying to get their other titles acquired and whatnot. SRS, like, for some reason, just didn't do a whole lot. They did a little bit. They didn't just disappear, but they, they slowed down a bit. Disco Tech is starting to get into the game a little bit. They did Legends of Dinosaurs and Monster Birds. Oh, this yeah. Year. Sh- sh- yeah, yeah, yeah. They announced Sharavan as well. I mean, that's not really Kaiju, but, yeah. But... What's interesting is next year we're getting, I mean, at this point, SRS is probably releasing five titles next year. Um, Actually, probably six, because we have confirmation for War of the Ninja Monsters, Yokai War, Yuzo, and Well Shark. Mm. So they probably, in like Midnight the Era and Hot Spring Shark Attack, feel like they're basically confirmed. And I'm pretty sure Love Shark will end up coming from them. So there's six titles that SRS will be putting out. Um, mm. There's a very, 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 very slim chance Janus and Criterion do a Heisei box set. There is Media Blasters is, uh, you know, working on getting more stuff released. They just did Ninja vs. Shark. Mm-hmm. So there is a lot coming, right? Um and it'll be I'm I'm curious to see if the kaiju boom comes back with a vengeance. We have, you know, Monarch concluding and possibly starting up again. We have Godzilla X Kong coming. It's very interesting to see like a second wave of kaiju content following, you know, the COVID thing. And what's even more interesting is somehow kaiju the kaiju genre unlike the superhero genre, which since COVID has like really struggled to keep moving at the momentum it was. I mean, Marvel has basically dropped. Uh, Disney as a company has dropped off the radar when it comes to their, you know, box office. Oh results. yeah. They've had like no billion dollar hits this year. Mm-mm. First time I mean, since been like $3 billion hits this year, to be fair. <laughs> right. Um, But either way, like, Somehow, the superhero genre is dying. Too sorry. Too sorry. Oppenheimer has not hit a billion. This is true. Um, it was very like, close. The kaiju genre has somehow been able to stand through this this drought, and they're coming back, and they're successful, right? Um, GVK was successful. Minus One is successful. Legend, uh, Monarch is successful. It sounds like that Singular Point and Rebirth were pretty successful. Um, but it is it is interesting to see that the kaiju genre is able to survive this way better than, than the superhero genre. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, was, you got hardcore fans like you and me, and then in cases of like Minus One, it's just very, very good word of mouth. Because, right. like, you know, it's the word of mouth for minus one is spread. You know, like, I loved it enough that I'm like, hey, friend's name, do you want to see it with me? Hey, other friends, you want to see it with me? And, you know, like, people in my life have also talked about how, like, even their work friends are, like, coming up to them, like, yo, you got to see this new Godzilla movie. It's so good. <laughs> You know, and that's that, that's that's good. The genre needs good word of mouth to survive. So yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's exciting to see. I'm happy that a new Godzilla movie is doing well. I'm happy people like it. I like it a lot. So you know, 
I'm seeing it tomorrow. <laughs> it it's going to be something. I I'm excited to see what 2024 brings us. Um, I can't say a lot, but I will say it does seem like kaiju might be something that is a financial option for me next year to a certain extent. Um, which is exciting. Like this is like, this is the year I, I I genuinely believe 2024 will be the year of kaiju films. Um, more so than we have had in a while. (laughs) Intriguing. So we'll see what comes of it. I think a lot of stuff has been building up to this and I think it's, it's very timely that it is it coincides with Godzilla's 70th. I think that's amazing. I think that's really really awesome. Hmm. Yeah, I'm very excited. Very excited to see what the future holds for this genre. But alas, I believe this is about it. I don't think there's a lot more we could cover. God damn, yeah. Well, I guess there is one last segment for this one last episode of this year. And it's the most noblest of podcasting traditions. I think you know what I'm talking about. I think I do. And it goes something along the lines of, Hello, I'm Elijah and I have a kaiju and tokusatsu problem. Joking aside, I am Elijah Thomas. I am part of the rotating hosts for Monsters with Attitude. You can check us out on YouTube, where we do monthly live streams talking kaiju entertainment. You can also head over to Facebook and join our Facebook group. It's a great place to talk with like-minded people. I am also a writer. I've written for GodzillaMovies.com and have been featured in Kaiju Ramen Magazine. Currently, I write for Kaiju United, and my most recent articles have been about Godzilla Minus One and a review for Minus One. My writing was also featured in the Rondo-nominated book, Giant Bug Cinema, A Monster Kid's Guide from Bear Manor Media, where I wrote about Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster. I'm also a filmmaker and a YouTuber. You can check out my stuff on YouTube at my channel, ET13 Productions, where you can see some of my short films and older YouTube videos, along with a playlist that features all of my appearances on YouTube. I do plan on getting some new videos out soon, so definitely check that out. I also have appeared in a kaiju movie, a little-known film called Zillafoot from 2021. I made a brief cameo in the film as Skywatcher number 2. It's got a rating of 3.7 out of 10 on IMDb, so you definitely want to check that out if you're looking for more kaiju. You can buy the Blu-ray on srscinema.com or the DVD from any major online realtor. Or just watch it for free on Tubi with ads or, you know, check it out on Prime. You can also check out my action figure photography on my Instagram at ET13 underscore productions and my ex, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Thanks, Danny, account at the same handle. But Rex, where can people find you at? Well, dear listeners, you can find me on YouTube at Rexino, on Twitter at Rex underscore Xenomorph, and on Instagram Rex underscore Zeno. And if you want to check out some of my writing, go take a look at the Tokusatsu Network. And as for the podcast, don't forget to rate us on iTunes that boosts the ratings and helps us get recommended to more people just like you. If you don't have an Apple device, which I don't blame you, I don't actually, that's a lie. This is literally a MacBook I'm using right now. But anyway, you can rate us on Spotify. If you want to stay up to date with all things Kaiju Conversation related, follow us on Twitter at K-A-I-J-U underscore C-O-N-V-E-R-S. If you don't have Twitter, you can follow us on Instagram or like us on Facebook. If you're like me before podcasting and you don't have any social media, fuck you. You can email us at kaijuconversation at gmail.com, all lowercase, all one word, you know the drill. And as always, we'll read your reviews on air for everyone to hear. We also have a Teespring store. Eventually, we're going to have original artwork on there. Maybe sooner rather than later. Maybe by the time this episode comes out, there is some. So go check it out. But you can also sport our awesome logo on a t-shirt or maybe even a coffee mug. If you'd like to chat with us, check out our Discord server full of others that have similar interests to you. Recently, in our general one chat, there was a discussion 
about the Godzilla Minus One box office results and some fan animations that have been posted online. It's a great community full of great people. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you can be notified anytime we upload a video. We sometimes post exclusive to the channel like bloopers for episodes or minisodes talking about news or other subjects. We also have an interview with Mechagodzilla designer Jared Kurchvesky on the channel. I definitely butchered his name. I'm so sorry. And a huge thanks to Rex for editing all of these episodes and all the other content we upload. His links can be found in the description below. Along with Rex, we'd like to give a huge thanks and shout out to Danny DeManna of the Godzilla Novelization Project for his amazing vocals on our theme song. You can support him by following him on Twitter at Danzilla93 underscore GNP or visit his website GodzillaNovelizationProject.com. And a huge thanks to Grattan Conwell from the podcast Giant Monster BS for composing the music for our theme song. You can support him by following the podcast on Twitter at Giant Monster BS or on any podcast platform under the name Giant Monster BS. And with that, we're going to wrap things up here. So thank you guys so much for listening. It's been a great year. I'm so happy we got through this whole year. Thank you guys for an amazing year of Kaiju Conversation. Truly, thank you. Thank you. And as always, please remember, life's too short to not talk big. See you next year, guys. Bye. Bye. We are set. We are in debt. There's nothing to sweat. Life's too short now, baby. Just not talk big now. Some wrecks now.